makes a mistake. So if you want to know how to deal with the problems in life and the difficulties in life, I talk about the detours in, this, in life, the dead ends in life, and the dry places in life. In life, you are going to come up to a detour. You start out saying, I'm going to be this, and, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to get married, and, and we're going to be happy. Well, I come tonight to tell you that you may have to take a detour. Because it may not be everything is wrapped up to be. But then when you come to a detour in your life, because in the book I show how when Israel left Egypt and was on their way to Canaan, God sent them through a detour. He didn't let them go the easy way and the short way because they weren't ready to go the easy way and the short way. And then they came to a dead end when they got to the Red Sea. Now a dead end is different from a detour because when you come to a detour, there's a sign that points and tells you which way to go. But now when you come to a dead end, there are no signs. And so Israel came to the Red Sea. The sea was before them. The enemies were behind them. Mountains on each side. They were at a dead end. And so they started grumbling. And God said, stand still and see the salvation of God. There comes a time in your life when you're not going to know what to do. There's going to come a time in your life when you're not going to know where to go and who to go to. It's time then to wait on the Lord. And then, of course, I talk about dry places. In everybody's life, whether you're Christian or not, you're going to have dry places in your life. Now, what's a dry place? A dry place is when you love somebody and they don't love you back, you in a dry place. Yeah, yeah, I can go on with that, but that's, that's a dry place. Yeah, how do you deal with that? How do you deal, how do you deal with the fact that you visit sick folk, but when you get sick, nobody visits you? You in a dry place. Yeah. That there are dry places in your life. And I show in the book, from the Word of God, you don't have to worry about whether or not it's biblical or scriptural, because it is. But I wanted to, I wanted to show people of God in the body of Christ how to deal with life. Because Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And so in this book, I show you how to live the abundant life as a child of God. And what to do when you don't know what to do. So if you don't have this book, I would hope that you would get it before this meeting comes uh, to a close. I think I have enough for everybody. And if you'd like me to autograph it, I'll be happy to do that. Now then, now I want you to get your Bibles. And I want you to turn to the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to Luke. How many Bibles in the house? Raise them up. Praise the name of Jesus. All right. How many red Bibles in the house? Anybody got a red Bible? Got a red Bible? All right. Well, all Bibles should be red. Oh, I got you, didn't I? Yeah, 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 I got you. You may not admit it, but I got you that time. I want you to turn to the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to Luke. There is a story. In the 16th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, and you've heard it, you've read it many times, it is a story of the rich man and Lazarus. Now, I'm not going to read all of that, but uh, we will begin at the 19th verse. The 19th verse, and I'll read a few of these verses. The Bible said there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. 
Tonight, I want to briefly talk about this rich man, and I want to appeal to every person in the house. I want you to understand that it is a deformation of the gospel of Jesus Christ to not talk about hell. I come to Boston to tell you that hell is real. I come to Boston to tell you that hell is a prepared place. For an unprepared people. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. You cannot believe in hell. You cannot disbelieve in hell and not believe in heaven. Because both places are prepared people. Places. And the same Bible that talks about hell talks about heaven. What is hell? Here is the subject. If you're waiting for a subject. The subject is hell, is truth seen too late. Hell is truth seen too late. One of the most tragic things in the world is to wake up in hell and then see truth. You need to see truth before You get to hell. And I come tonight to tell you that hell is hot. Hell is a place prepared for the devil and his angels. It's not prepared for you. It's prepared for the devil and his angels. And hell is a place where you recognize truth, but it's too late. Now, this man, the Bible says, and I want you to look at this. We're going to read this together. The Bible says very clearly, the first thing about this man, in the 23rd verse, the Bible says, In hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. He was in hell before he saw the truth of the mercy of God. He had to go to hell before he recognized the mercy of God. God is a merciful God. God is a good God. God woke you up this morning and he started you on your way. God lets us live from day to day. You went to sleep last night not knowing whether you were in the world or not. And early this morning, God touched you with the finger of his love and awakened you to a day that you never saw before. And that's why in the church of Christ, we ought not have a problem praising God. Because God is a good God. 